Welcome to episode number 12. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. This week we examine the effort to criminalize Islam and Muslim women in particular on the European continent. But first, a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Now let's get into it. Last week, the European Court of Justice granted corporations the power to ban Muslim women from wearing a headscarf or hijab should the employer wish to pursue a policy of, quote, neutrality. The ruling states that employers may prohibit any form of visible religious expression should the employer wish to present a neutral image towards its customers, but in specifically targeting the hijab. This is nothing less than a naked attempt to repackage anti-Muslim discrimination in the name of protecting, quote, liberal values. Kind of like these guys taking away the right to vote from African Americans in the name of fair and free elections. And let's not forget we are talking about a headscarf here. A headscarf. I mean, it's not like we are talking about the niqab or burqa, which is where the effort to criminalize Islam actually began. We are talking only about a tiny piece of cloth that covers the top of your head, something that Muslim women wear only as a symbol of modesty and dignity. They're not making a political statement or imposing their culture on you or anybody else for that matter. I mean, it's far more culturally benign than a Christian wearing a crucifix around his or her neck. But we don't enact laws to ban Christians wearing a replica of the device Jesus Christ was tortured to death upon. It's a headscarf, and it's not even uniquely Muslimy, as non-Muslim women also wear it for a variety of personal reasons. Heck, they were a trendy fashion accessory for European women in the 1970s, and like all things fashionable, I'm sure there will come a point very soon in which wearing a headscarf becomes trendy once again, like all fashionable things do. For instance, Today we are witnessing a return of another fashion icon from the 1970s, the mullet. Look at this thing. The mullet is about the most offensive statement a man can make of his hair, but nobody's saying they should be banned in the workplace. Although somebody should. But that's the point, isn't it? Even if I wanted to ban the mullet, I would be confronted with the reality that we almost never enact laws that restrict or control the lawful and non-harmful behavior of the Western male. But patriarchal Western society loves nothing more than controlling the female body. A reality that takes on a whole new level of meaning when that female so happens to be Muslim. Because somehow we've convinced ourselves that Muslim women are in need of saving from Muslim men. That we are the morally righteous liberators of a dark continent set on a secular but divine mission to save brown women from brown men or what is aptly called the Western colonial rape and rescue fantasy. Banning a Muslim woman from wearing her cultural headscarf is not only located within this deranged, sexualized fetish, but also within Europe's demented obsession with the clothing choices of Muslim women, an obsession rooted in Islamophobia, racism, and misogyny. I mean, this is where things are at. That at the same time Europe is being ravaged by another wave of COVID-19, as the Delta variant causes a spike in infection, hospitalization, and death, European politicians are instead fixated on the hijab. I mean, come on. Look, I know a lot of you watching this right now are not followers of the Islamic religion, but you too can just see how utterly absurd and racist this is, right? It's as equally ridiculous as that time members of the Australian government tried to pass a law banning the burqa, despite the fact that fewer than five Muslim Australian women actually wear it. I mean, talk about setting your national priorities. Look, there's just no way of getting around the fact that banning Muslim women from wearing a headscarf is not only absurd, but also that it represents a drift away from secular liberal democracy and a huge step towards fascism. It's almost like Europe has completely forgotten about these guys. You see, they too enforced clothing restrictions on a persecuted religious minority, and we all know how that ended up. The point here is genocide violence doesn't start with the act of killing. It starts with hateful and dehumanizing acts of speech. Inevitably, this discriminatory discourse becomes the basis for newly created discriminatory laws. And then before you know it, smoking chimney stacks in Dachau and mass graves in Srebrenica. Look, Europe has long flown the flag for the ideals we understand to be liberal secular democracy. These ideals include equality, inclusiveness, fairness, justice, and freedom from want and freedom from fear. But if Europe is serious about maintaining its commitment to these values, then it should be concerned less with what it is that Muslim women put on their head and be more concerned with protecting Muslim women from violent crimes of hate, specifically those carried out by right-wing extremists and neo-Nazis. Which brings me to my next point. But first, this acknowledgement. No religious minority in Europe has suffered more abuse and cruelty than the Jewish people. 
That's just a demonstrable fact. But European countries have implemented a raft of safeguards and laws against anti-Semitism to shut off the path that leads directly to a repeat of the Holocaust. These same safeguards, however, have not been afforded to Muslims, even though the most recent genocide to have occurred in Europe was against Muslims a mere 25 years ago. So what does this all mean? It means that in Europe today, Muslims are the new Jews. Well, I totally understand that you might dislike that phraseology particularly because anti-Semitism remains rampant on the political fringes and because nobody's suffering should be compared to another's. But there's just no getting around the fact that Europeans would not tolerate a ban on Jewish cultural practices. I mean, imagine a global outcry where a European court or European country to slap a ban on the tickle, which is pretty much the Jewish woman's version of the hijab. Nobody would put up with that. Not the citizens of that country, not the United Nations, not the United States, not NATO, not nobody. Within five minutes, that country would be hit with economic and diplomatic sanctions and its leaders accused of mimicking the Nazis. So why then is it okay to enact the same kind of discriminatory laws against Muslims? And worse, why is it okay to enact these laws at the same time hate crimes against Muslims, particularly Muslim women, continue to surge upwards year after year? For instance, more than 90% of anti-Muslim hate crime victims in the Netherlands are women. In France, women represent 80% of all anti-Muslim hate crimes, and in the UK, it's 90%. And we shouldn't be surprised, because Islamophobia, like all forms of racism, is rooted in irrational fear, thus making anti-Muslim violence a form of cowardice, and there's nothing more cowardly than attacking a woman. In Germany alone, there are more than 900 hate crimes against Muslims in an ordinary year. And a similar story can be told about France, Spain, and the United Kingdom, and don't get me started on Serbia, where elected officials are now openly celebrating the Bosnian genocide. Clearly, Muslims need protection from the law, the same way European countries have protected their Jewish minorities. But countries such as France, Switzerland, and Belgium are doing the exact opposite in proposing or passing laws that ban certain Islamic religious practices and customs. Look, here's a newsflash. Europe doesn't have a Muslim problem. It has a COVID-19 problem, a growing income inequality problem, a debt problem, housing affordability problem, a job scarcity problem, and so many other problems. So please explain to me how a woman wearing a headscarf adds to these problems or is a problem full stop. Obviously, you can't. You see, government is meant to keep us safe from harm. In other words, you ban certain things that cause harm to others, not items of clothing or fashion. Democracy doesn't mean majoritarian rule. Democracy means so many things, including the protection of minorities. That much should be obvious, but the effort to criminalize Islam in Europe does not stop and start with the hijab, unfortunately. It goes much, much further. The French government, for instance, approved a law in January under the Orwellian sounding Charter of Republican Values, a pretext to locating Islam outside and separate to French national identity in the name of fighting non-existent Islamic separatism. The law imposes restrictions on almost every aspect of Muslim lives and allows direct government intervention and control over mosques, Islamic schools and charities, a level of scrutiny not applied to any other religious minority since the 1940s. Similar calls are now being made across the European continent as far-right political parties gain traction from the economic devastation caused by the pandemic. Alarmingly, this means Europe has learnt not a single lesson from the Holocaust, having forgotten that far-right and fascist movements take hold in times of economic distress. Hitler blamed the Jews for the economic devastation caused by the Treaty of Versailles and then later the Great Depression, and today we see mainstream right-wing political parties scapegoating Muslims for it as a result of decades of failed political leadership. We now see the National Rally Party in France, the Alternative for Deutschland Party in Germany, the Party for Freedom in the Netherlands, the Law and Justice Party in Poland, along with many others, openly vilifying Muslims the same way the Nazi party vilified and scapegoated Jews. These parties not only support bans on the hijab, but also bans on Muslim migrants, mosques, and even the celebration of Ramadan. It should not be forgotten that the current British Prime Minister referred to Muslim women as letterboxes. It's this kind of hateful and dehumanizing rhetoric that creates a permissive environment for racist and right-wing extremists to attack Muslims, but particularly Muslim women in the streets. It also creates a space for white nationalists to march in the cities chanting Nazi slogans against Muslims. And it creates an atmosphere in which terrorist attacks against mosques and wherever Muslim communities gather are invited. Like the attack carried out against Turkish migrants in Germany last year, which left 11 Muslims dead. 
The banning of the hijab sits at the top of a very slippery slope that not only leads to opportunistic hate crimes, but also invariably to concentration camps and genocide, which is why we must oppose these hateful laws with all our might. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word with your family and friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please consider supporting this endeavor by becoming a member of the show at patreon.com slash CJ But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.